What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this super quick guide, I'll show you how to get the best performance out of Delta Force now that the Black Hawk Down DLC has released. And if you're going to be jumping into the co-op campaign with your friends, this is how to get the best performance out of the game and your system. Keep in mind that this video is only going to cover the in-game settings and a few tweaks around it, not general Windows optimization. Instead, you'll find detailed guides linked down below for Windows 10, 11, Nvidia, and a couple of other useful things to get even more performance out of your system. So without further ado, let's actually begin. First of all, if you're running the game, close it. I'll show you how to disable forced anti-aliasing, which is going to make the game a lot more clear for both multiplayer and the brand new co-op campaign. All you need to do is head across to where the game is installed. If you have it in Steam, right click it here, hover over manage and choose browse local files. Then from this game directory, open the game folder, followed by Delta Force, saved, followed by config, windows client, and inside of here, you're looking for engine.ini. Open this text file with any text editor, such as notepad, and scroll all the way down to the bottom. We'll be adding a few new extra lines at the very end here. In the description down below, you'll find exactly what you need to copy and paste. This, system settings, post-process AA quality, zero. This disables the forced anti-aliasing, or TAA, which should make the game a lot more clear. And while we're in here, for an extra bonus tip, if you'd like to disable chromatic aberration, which is that red-blue shift slash split that you get with some images and some scenes, you can add R, tone mapper, quality equals zero, to the same command and disable that as well for an even more clear game. Simply just save this file and close it. Now we can get in game and actually get the most out of it. Now this game is relatively well optimized. It's been out for a short while and good changes have been made. Clicking the cog wheel in the top right to open options under the game tab, you'll find scope magnification adapts automatically. This option I'd recommend you play with. Some people say it lowers their recoil when it's turned on. Other people say the mouse just feels weird when this option is on or off based on whatever your personal preference is. Speaking of the mouse feeling weird, under the keyboard and mouse tab, mouse sensitivity, I'd recommend checking out the ADS sensitivity type. If for some reason scoping in or using different weapons and things like that feels weird, it just doesn't feel consistent, change this from MDV only to set sensitivity per zoom and leave everything at one. You can customize this to make higher powered scopes move a bit less when you move your mouse, etc. Customize this as you see fit, but leaving everything at one makes everything equally consistent. This is how I usually play this game. Also, on top of that, you can check out the ADS sensitivity multiplier, which some people lower to 0.5. Instead of doing this, both of those work in their own individual way. Then under the controls and combat tab, still under keyboard and mouse, scrolling down here, you'll find lean peak left and lean peak right. Both of these by default are usually toggle. Set these to hold for a better experience. The same goes for aim. When you hold right click, you'd expect it to pop up and pop down as in back Battlefield and Call of Duty, that's because that's usually set to hold instead of toggle. By default, this game is toggle and it can just feel a bit weird. Finally, scrolling down here, hold breath once more is either hold or toggle. Just make sure all of these are set to hold for a more typical gameplay experience. With that, we can continue to the screen tab and actually get to getting more performance. First of all, show performance parameters, absolutely have this turned on to see your ping, packet loss, FPS, and a few other important things as needed in game. Everything else here is your preference. Under the graphics tab, your display mode should be full screen for the most consistent best performance, but on modern systems, borderless window usually doesn't have too much of a drop compared to full screen, especially if you like to tab out into Discord, browsers, etc. This is how I play this game. If you play full screen, you can change the resolution and display refresh rate. Make sure both of these match your display or at least are compatible, otherwise things will be needlessly blurry. Brightness, your preference. In match frame cap, this I would recommend changing, especially if you're a streamer or recording, or for some reason, YouTube and things like that pause because your system is under a huge load while playing the game. Change this from unlimited to slightly lower than what you're actually getting. If you're getting 120 FPS, cap it to 100. If you're getting 80-ish FPS, cap it to 75. If you're getting 70, cap it to 60, etc. This way you'll clear up just a bit of headroom on your system for other programs to work properly in the background while you're playing the game. Speaking of, if you'd like to give the game all the performance it can while you're playing it, that's fine. But when you're back in the main menu and things are still lagging, change this out of match frame rate cap here to be something a bit lower. I've heard that this also affects the firing range, so just keep that in mind. 
Sharpness, your preference, especially worthwhile playing with if you play with upscaling, we'll get there in just a moment. Then VSync and FastSync, if you have Nvidia FastSync, should both be turned off for less input latency and should only be turned on if you need to fix screen tearing where different parts of the screen don't match up properly. Scrolling down, field of view, entirely your preference, while it does technically affect FPS, absolutely set these to what you prefer. And scope magnification should just be turned off, as when this is turned on, it'll use extra PC power to make the scope look better. Who cares? This is a competitive game, at least online. If you want in this co-op game mode, play around with this, but always just leave it off for the most part. Then basic graphics and advanced graphics. Here is where things get a bit difficult. If you're on a lower end system, you're likely all the way down on low, and that's all that you can do. If you're barely cranking out enough frames, this is where you'll be most of the time. If you're one of these people who has to play with everything all the way down on low, consider raising your textures under advanced graphics for a free boost in quality with practically no FPS impact at all, based on how much VRAM your graphics card has. Check the bottom right to see how much is available and how much the game could be using, such as down here. This texture setting should be set to low if you're running a 4 gig VRAM graphics card. If you're around 6, set this to medium or high. If you're around 8 gigs, set this to high or ultra, or anything above that, you can comfortably leave this on extreme for really good looking textures, especially important if you're on a 4K display. If you are, consider extreme or maybe even ultimate. Extreme is pretty much as high as I would go with any option, especially on my current setup. That's pretty much the optimized settings for the best performance. But of course, if you want the game to look a bit better, instead of having everything lowered down for the competitive edge, then I'd probably work my way down from a higher graphics preset. Let's go from Ultra and change a few things down for a boost in performance while still keeping the game looking really good. Consider this the high-end optimization. First of all, ambient occlusion. Drop this down to medium, which is as low as we can go without turning this off for a boost in performance. Depth of field should also be turned off if you'd like things to not be needlessly blurry in the background. And of course, the same goes for weapon motion blur. While this is only for your weapon and nothing else, this is personal preference, you can turn this on or off as you see fit. Then finally, the only other thing I'd recommend lowering would be the volumetric fog option over here. Set this down to low for better visibility and better performance in game. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do to optimize for higher end systems. Of course, you may be working from high instead of ultra, but the same thing stands. Just those two options is usually more than enough. Then finally, scrolling all the way down to super resolution, I would recommend you play this game with DLSS or FSR2. While it's not the best to have a competitive shooter that needs up scaling, this game does need upscaling to reach good FPS, and for that reason I'd recommend probably quality as low as I would go for this. You can push to performance if you need more FPS, but quality is where I'll be leaving it for the fewest visual artifacts and distracting things like that. The Nvidia Reflex Low Latency, if you have an Nvidia graphics card, I would recommend turning this on to low latency. If you find your CPU band, then set this to enhanced, which is essentially on plus boost. Finally, if you have an RTX 40 series or above graphics graphics card that can use a DLSS frame generation, I would recommend you leave this off. DLSS frame generation lowers your base frame rate and increases input latency even slightly. For that reason, I'd recommend leaving this off. In any competitive shooter, Delta Force is definitely one of them. And that's it. There's not really too much else we need to change here. On the audio tab, after applying our changes, I'd recommend playing with the HRTF setting to get better spatial positioning in your audio. And down here by voice volume, it's usually good to lower this, especially if you're playing a multiplayer. Once you're done optimizing all of your graphic settings, check the very bottom for your recompile shaders button. This is super useful to click. Once you've changed all of your settings to whatever you see fit, clicking this and then restarting your game will take a bit longer to start it up, but it's recompiling shaders and getting everything to work with your current settings. You should see a small performance boost after doing that. And that's pretty much it with these settings. In my previous video, where I did a benchmark, I went from around 90 FPS to about 120, which is pretty good. And the same thing stands for now you should see a good increase in performance after making these changes. That's it. Hopefully you enjoy the brand new Black Hawk Down co-op campaign. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.